Mr. Meenan. Well, hello. How's it going? It's going good. Exciting times. So lots of good. stuff going on. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've gathered. I've gathered. Yeah, it seems like you've been uh, you've been busy over on the Chrome stuff lately. Yeah, I mean, it's it's stuff that I've wanted to see ship for a while. Um, unfortunately, you know, I didn't actually do most of the work. It's uh, Yoav, Dominic, a bunch of people on Chrome put in a lot of the effort a few years ago, even uh, with Priority Hints in particular. Uh, and it's just one of those things that I think there's enough value in it that I'm trying to like finally push it over the finish line. And uh, with all of the the core web vitals excitement over the last year or so, I think it's like the right time because, as we'll see as we sort of chat about it today, um, it almost feels like priority hints is like a cheat code for the, <laughs> the the at least for the LCP, and it's like one line of change and you get fifty percent faster. It's like Fun. not off not often you get that kind of win. No, it's not usually when it's. Usually when I hear that, I get a little uh, like, you know, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm jaded or bitter at like what the board is, but like, I'm like, yeah, is it really though? But like, no, I like, yeah. And we'll it's not, it's that. not gaming the metric it's either, awesome. right? Which true. is what you usually get when it's one of those. True, true. Yeah. And thanks everybody for uh, for tuning in too, as you can see, it's it's Pat. Um, <laughs> uh, Pat was is the person who built web page test and ran it out of, your basement was web page test headquarters for how many years? Like 12? Yeah, I think more? like 12 ish years. And you have no idea how liberating it was to get all of the infrastructure <laughs> out of my basement. We could actually move, you know, it's the, the, the things you don't think about that hold you back. Yeah, I'd be I'd be fascinated to see the uh, well. I guess you moved, so it's like you, the comparison is not apples <laughs> to apples. But I'd be I'd be fascinated to see the before and after in terms of like the electric bill, <laughs> but yeah, because yeah, there's literally just like racks and racks of stuff in your basement, which yeah, awesome. and you know, not the greatest situation for a production environment, <laughs> but <laughs> luckily we had reasonably. Uh, reliable power and internet, and so it worked yeah. well. But I'm I'm really excited that it's all running on you know real production infrastructure with Cloudflare mm -hmm. and real ops teams and people actually paying attention to it. it, is, I, it is. I don't have to get up in the middle of the night and go, oh, it's down. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yeah, no, that's true. That's that's other people know. No, it's, it is nice. It is nice to have it on the like that whole system and the backing, and it's like a team working on it. It's kind of fun, like. Yeah. Um, and, and oh my God, the UI. <laughs> it's <laughs> awesome to have you and Scott in particular working and cleaning up the the old 1980s MySpace UI that I had for the longest time and pulled off a miracle because you did a, a glorious sort of reskinning without losing functionality. So it, it looks modern, but it, it's actually even gaining functionality, which is like yeah. one of the hardest things to pull off. Well, in, in Scott's, like, Scott was the one who really did all the responsive work and, like, being able to maintain that, the functionality, and keep, like, responsive down to the... I think there was... I was thinking about it because there was a point... Because I, I wrote a book about responsive design, and then shortly after that, I started working for myself, and I was like, oh, I should... Like, and I was using web page tests. I'm like, I should make web page tests responsive. I could do this, and I'm pretty positive I pinged you about it. And you were like, go right ahead. And you're like, it would be great. And like, you might have even like set me up with like a separate branch or something. I don't remember. I just remember having the conversation and then being like, eh, once <laughs> and it didn't happen. So it's nice to see it happen. Yeah, and I think it was my usual go right ahead, just don't remove any functionality. It's yes. Like, oh, yeah. uh, that's going to be hard on mobile. But yeah, I mean, he pulled it off. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's not only usable, it's actually really good on mobile now. Yeah, no, he's pretty darn good at it. Um, yeah, it was turned out nice. It's nice. It's good. So that is nice to be able to chat again. Like, figured, I already, I, 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 we knew, we knew at some point you were going to be doing a few of these, right? Like, you weren't going to get out of here. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, I still use the tool like yeah. almost every day. So, well, and you're still contributing. I was gonna, I joked. I think it was maybe your first PR ever to the web page test project was once you were at Chrome, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> I think it was I mean, it, It's very weird not or committing directly to to trunk and having <laughs> it roll out to production right away. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I we try to be punctual. Sometimes we just let you wait for a little bit just to make it smooth, like make it interesting. But yeah. <laughs> And you know it keeps production running. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Nice. Um, well, yeah, so I, 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 like I told you before and uh, mentioned to folks and stuff like online, um, I kind of wanted to talk about like the priority hints. Like so far, so far for all of these students, we've either done like just like very specific like live audit or, you know, maybe show off a couple kind of features and stuff. This is a little different. This is like a new perf uh, standard or emerging standard, I guess, would be maybe the right word. What's the right word there? Yeah, like, that's probably the best way. It's definitely not a standard yet. It's yeah. it's in WICG as a proposal, uh, and we're sort of working through the hoops to get it standardized enough where we can actually ship it. Uh, right now, it's under origin trial. Um, so if you want to use priority hints, and please, please use priority hints if it works well for you. Um, under an origin trial and provide feedback because that's part of what helps us finally get over that last hump and ship it without the origin trial so everyone can use it. No. Nice. Is the is this the the, the latest uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about the origin trial and all that stuff as we go. Is this the 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 latest version of the WSCG thing? Maybe the link hold on. I was gonna say, share. what's this re this you refer to? Oh, do you not see the banner? There's a banner oh, there. Right? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Too many things to look at. Yes, that is the current okay. cool. uh, version of it, and it, it really hasn't changed. I mean, the I think 2018 is when it last went to origin trial. What has mostly changed is when it went to origin and trial in 2018. Um, the focus was largely around JavaScript priorities, and so. Chrome has a bunch of heuristics, and there's a, a link to the actual table that shows under what situations different resources get what different priorities and when they're going to load and stuff. Right. Um, and JavaScript was always sort of the, the more complicated one, where blocking JavaScript, uh, if it's render blocking, like up towards the top of the document, gets a really high priority. If it's towards the end of the document but still blocking, um, it gets a reasonably high priority, like a medium priority, because the focus on the, the general heuristic across the web at the time was um, that's blocking the browser from getting to DOM content loaded. If application logic's hooked up to DOM content loaded and waiting on the DOM, we want to make sure we get to that as soon as possible. And then async scripts and deferred scripts get a lower priority because they're like not blocking the actual parser anywhere. And so um, scripts in particular was, well, what if you have an async script that you want to run sooner? Like a lot of the, the frameworks react and all of that kind of stuff. Use a, a loader that's all async and it's loading async scripts, but it's actually the core for the application and you want it to load quickly. Uh, and so the, the priority hints was largely at the time around that. There was, and the, the document has it, there was some focus on images, um, getting like carousels for the main image to load sooner and the other uh, images to load later. Um, but it was mostly like, how do we load async scripts faster? And unfortunately at the time there was a, a hack and it, it's a complete hack, and it's very Chrome specific. But if you preload uh, a script, uh, it gets the high priority of a blocking script, no matter if the script ends up being used async. And so everyone who cared about using scripts at a higher priority was already using the preload hack. Okay. And so priority hints uh, didn't offer any measurable benefit beyond the preload hack. I mean, it's a lot cleaner. You mark the scripts that you think are important as important uh, rather than having a link preload right in front of them. Um, but there was no like metric differences or anything like that. And it was, if people had already made the tooling change, there wasn't a lot of reason. Uh, and so it, it kind of stalled out. We didn't have good metrics that would have showed the benefits from like the images where, like I said, late body JavaScript gets kind of like a medium priority. Uh, images always got a low priority until layout and they're discovered to be in the viewport. And then it goes, oh, I really want these images now. And then they get boosted to a high priority. Um, but there was no way to say, load these images before the late body scripts, for example. And so um, what we're trying to look at, and now that we have Core Web Vitals and LCP in particular, we actually have good metrics that represent uh, sort of the the visual user experience where we think um, the priority hints are actually going to be able to shine in a way that they couldn't. There is no hack. The only way to get an image to load 
quickly in Chrome right now is if you preload the image and it's like the first low priority resource because even pro preloaded images are low priority right now. Um, and Chrome will load one low priority resource at a time uh, when it's loading the critical render blocking stuff. So if you have an async script and your preload for your images after the async script, your image is still going to get stuck behind the async script. Um, but if you happen to have it as like the first thing and you're restructuring the HTML and everything, you could technically get images to load quicker, but it's an awful lot of work. Sure. And so hopefully with priority hints, you just go, hey, this is my hero image. Um, tag it and say, this is the important one. And then the preload scanner can see that well before render time. And it can go, hey, this is a critical part of the, the content. Let me load it sooner. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, that that one low priority resource at a time during the render blocking phase actually came because of images. Um, I think it was actually Steve Souders at the time when we were working on the resource prioritization in Chrome. He was working with Airbnb, I want to say, and they have that like massive background image on their page. And when we were delaying all of the images and only loading the critical render blocking content, we would make Airbnb slower, uh, for example, because uh, the text would load, but then the the big hero image would load late, and it was the first low priority resource in the page. And so we said, you know what, we'll do one at a time, and so we can hopefully get that that one image loaded uh, in the early phase of Chrome's loading sequence. Um, pages have been restructured since then, and even on Airbnb, the hero image is no longer the first image in the markup, and so. We're loading an image. It's not necessarily the important image first, and then we'll load three or four images on Airbnb before we get to their actual hero image. Uh, and so this hopefully gives devs a way uh, in markup um, to to tell the browser, "Hey, this is this is the one that I want you to load, or this I need you to load sooner," uh, in ways that they couldn't do it before. It is specific to Chrome. I mean, all browsers have their own prioritization engines in, internally, um, and hopefully they'll adopt it. And they all have reasons where boosting the priority will still improve their performance. Usually it it's boils down to HTTP2 or HTTP3 prioritization, where they'll pass the priorities down through uh, to the origin, or even in the case of HTTP1, where you have like six connections, uh, per origin, which request you send next is uh, picked based on priorities. And so even for non-Chrome browsers, when they adopt it, um, you'll still get some head of line jumping. It's just most of them don't have the same sort of two-phase loading that Chrome does, where it's mostly only the render blocking resources right at the beginning of the waterfall and then everything else. And for Chrome, the big knob that you can turn is moving things across that line things that would normally be loaded late in the waterfall. Um, and I can, if you want to share. Yeah, I was going to say, let's, screen. yeah, can we? Because yeah, so, that's, that's going to be one of the questions is like, if you're like, I mean, first we'll have to go through like how you add the priority hands and stuff like that and what that looks like. But one of the questions was like, how do you even know that this is going to be something that potentially is worth looking at? Yeah, so um, in this case, it's Amazon, but it's sort of the, the stereotypical waterfall for, um, both what looks like a priority hint opportunity and also sort of Chrome's two-phase loading. And you sort of see, you get the HTML and then you have this long uh, sequence of CSS and stuff that's all loaded uh, in parallel. And then there's kind of a little break and then everything else. Uh, and this is sort of the, this is the render blocking head content uh, phase when Chrome is loading. It knows about these other resources, but it hasn't, there's like no light bar or anything. It hasn't actually issued them uh, even internally to Chrome until it, it gets past um, reaching the body tag effectively. Uh, and then it opens up the floodgates and requests all of the images. And so this is kind of the stereotypical and actually my favorite view these days in web page test is yours, Tim. It's the, I jump straight into the web vitals view because um, I, I, I really love the, well, first seeing, yes, it is an image um, that is the core web vital LCP element and it's in the HTML markup and so, that's one thing that tells me, hey, this could be an easy candidate for priority hints because it's in the markup, it's in, it's an image, and it's loaded in this sort of second phase of the waterfall. And I like, it's really nice to be able to look at the, the trimmed waterfall with the highlighted element. You can go, okay, here I can see 
the the HTML parse happened here, like right around one and a half, one point six seconds, and that's when it actually would have discovered the image and most of the other content, but it didn't request it until two and a half seconds. And this feels like one of those, hey, if I just put an importance equals high on the hero image, it's not the first image that's loading. It's not the first low priority thing that's loading. Um, but you can sort of predict that goes, OK, this image can load at the same time as all of these other things. It's still on a different origin, unfortunately. Um, it'd be nice if they could coalesce those connections. but big companies have reasons. Um, yeah. And so at best, you could move this image to load here like at 2.1 uh, second, give or take. So right after the, con the connection. Right. The yeah, set. right after the connection's established. And you can get it loading at the same time as the CSS and stuff. And so you could predict that instead of finishing the image load at around 2.8 seconds, you could probably finish the image load at around 2.4 seconds. And so shave likely 400-ish milliseconds off of LCP yeah. or getting that image loaded. And you could actually have the initial render, because the, the first render is right here at the 2.7 second mark or so. Uh, and right now, it does like the initial render, uh, first contentful, and then the largest contentful, kind of one after the other. If you have the image already ready by the time it does the first paint, um, the initial paint of the content could actually have that hero image as well. And so let me see if I actually have. Yeah, and so in the, we'll get to how I did this in a second. But so when we add the priority hint uh, to, let me drop it to a more granular. Also very cool that all of those radio buttons are now inside of a, a simple settings area. But yeah, so now the initial uh, content display is, you know, maybe 100 milliseconds later uh, than before, but it includes the product image and everything else. And it's a huge win on getting the product image there, where in this case, it loaded at 2.9 seconds, whereas previously 3.8 seconds. So almost a one second savings for like one of the fastest websites in the world uh, for getting the main product image loaded. Um, you know, I can't make the call uh, for Amazon. One of the one of the things that does change is like here the 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 stars uh, for the the reviews for the product loaded at the same time as the the image, and now the stars don't load until after the image. Does that matter for conversion engagement? All of that kind of stuff, I can't really speak to. But as far as being able to control when things load and how quickly they load, adding importance equals high to the the product image was a yeah, thirty percent win um, to the metric right off the bat, uh, and it's certainly worth experimenting with. Can you jump into the waterfall on that one and show like the, the yeah. waterfall difference there too, just so everybody can kind of see where? Because I know you described the shift, but right. just the shift happened. Yeah, and so here you can see. Yes, there's right. nothing before, and it loaded right up. And there's the importance equals high now on the the image element, and here we have it. Um, right. It's it's issued to the browser as soon as it's parsed in the HTML. And as soon as the connection's available, it goes out over the HTTP2 connection and it loads um, however the connection sequences it relative to the CSS, but in parallel right after. And so, yeah, it's right before the initial render, the image is already there so it can get painted right away. And it's usually right at the beginning part of the waterfall the bandwidth isn't, this is another really nice thing to sort of look at when you're looking at the, the, the Web Vitals version of the waterfall is the bandwidth utilization. Usually it, it's not saturated right at the beginning part of the waterfall. And it's really not saturated at that transition point between the render blocking content and the rest of the content. And so it really does usually come as a free win where you can move it earlier and it kind of gets sequenced after the render blocking stuff, but before it normally would have loaded. So like here, you see it's at the end of all of the CSS, which is even higher priority, um, but it's still before it would have normally been loaded. And so you get kind of the free win by kind of stuffing it into that free space in the waterfall as well. So is there is there less risk? Because you said you, uh, so we know there was a little bit less work, like for using preload, right? Like now that preload has been fixed, um, which, by the way, if you haven't, if you, you know, have preload in place, what version of is that? Version ninety-five. Ninety-five, I think. 
Yep. Yeah. So if you were using preload uh, and you haven't looked since, like absolutely compare like what happened in version 95 and 96 for performance because the entire behavior of preload changed. Like it was a bit of a uh, <laughs> a blunt object dumb instrument, I guess, that kind of just shoved something like super high priority and now it tries to keep like some sense, like you said, of source order and stuff like that. So could we achieve, we could achieve this by using preload, but then we'd have to be pretty particular about where we put preload in the page, right? Right, and so, well, there's two parts to it. You could have mostly achieved this, this same behavior by putting the image preload as the first low priority resource that the parser sees anywhere in the document, right? And so you would have had the preload tag up in the head before any async scripts and before however these low priority JavaScript um, or medium priority uh, style sheets are added, um, maybe non-media matching or something like that. But um, yeah, so if you structured the HTML just right and you inserted the uh, the preload tag at the right point, you could have got the browser to load it sooner. And that's why it's not, like if you've already done that with your HTML, you may not see a benefit to, to using the preload. Or if you if your HTML consists of one image and nothing else, um, the, the priority hints may not show any benefit above what you're already getting. But what you do get is when you use the priority hint on this, this is no longer a low priority image loading soon. It is now a high priority image. Uh, and so the one low at a time still continues. And so whatever was loading, you didn't like remove what was loading originally. Um, and you're not using that one low priority slot at a time. You've literally just moved the image into the other bucket without removing something else out. Gotcha. And so there, there is even the priority hint above preload does have a slight different uh, change in behavior, but not having to change the markup and structure it exactly right. Sometimes, especially with uh, yeah, frameworks really and CMS, that. it's a whole yeah. lot easier to go, just emit the importance equals high tag and be done with it. Um, yeah. I will say, you know, just like with lazy load, <laughs> don't tag everything. I was gonna um, say, we posted this question in the, in the chat high break, by the way. <laughs> yeah, prioritizing everything, elevating the priority of everything is probably a bad idea. And yeah, I mean, you don't necessarily want to just uh, prioritize your hero image. Uh, for LCP, if you have an LCP hero image and you want to improve your LCP, that's the easiest way is to just prioritize the hero image. But if you have um, like a logo and other images that make up the actual uh, Chrome of your page, for example, that that's in the viewport that you want to see soon, um, by all means, uh, add importance equals high to those as well, because they are important. And once layout happens, the browser would naturally have uh, boosted the priority of those. But if you can give it a hint earlier, uh, you'll get more of your UI on the screen sooner uh, if you tag it. But certainly the hero image, the main product image, um, that kind of thing is, is kind of a no-brainer. But yeah, if you slap it on all of your images, um, you'll probably turn Chrome into Safari and where everything loads all at the same time. And then it's going to be up to the network or your servers to sort out priorities and what gets served in what order. So be careful. Uh, you can't damage anything, right? If you if you boost the priority, worst thing you'll do is you'll accidentally make it a little bit slower. Um, so watch your metrics. You won't break anything. Um, the order things get loaded in is really just an optimization for how quickly things can get displayed. Uh, it won't change the execution unless you have timing bugs. Um, but yeah, so be judicious with it, I think is probably the best way to put it. Good advice, probably good advice with most things like this. Yeah, okay. And so I guess it's a good time to jump into the how, right? Yeah. And so like, I don't, own Amazon, unfortunately. Uh, and so <laughs> I also don't have commit rights. <laughs> for some reason, they don't give me commit <laughs> rights to their production pages. And so I couldn't actually go in and do the importance high on the production Amazon page. Uh, and so uh, Cloudflare Workers is sort of my go-to. It's incredibly useful for prototyping this kind of stuff, particularly combined with web page test. And so let me see if I have... Yeah, so web page test scripting language has a really zoom in on that has a, a really cool feature called override host. 
uh, where you can, and so there's a substitution pattern. In this case, percent %host is just whatever host I happen to use for the URL I'm testing. And so in this case, it would be www.amazon.com. And what it does is, is it says, any requests going to www.amazon.com instead send to test.perf.workers.dev but do it under the covers. So the browser, cores, everything else still thinks it's talking to www.amazon.com. We're just rewriting the network requests to go to a different destination. And it adds an X host header um, to the requests to say, okay, I know I'm requesting test.perf.workers.dev, uh, but this request was originally for www.amazon.com. And so whatever's on the, the server side can go, hey, okay, I got this request. This is the URL fragment, but I really wanted it from amazon.com. And the second part just says, navigate to whatever page was being tested. And so you can test any page on any site and rewrite it to go through, this is my Cloudflare worker. I think I was fairly early in the workers, so I got perf.workers.dev as my origin yes. from their free uh, workers. And so it's the great thing about a lot of things Cloudflare. You can sign up for a free workers origin and set your own worker up and do all of this prototyping without actually having to set up a full Cloudflare account or anything. Um, although I do recommend workers are just awesome for all sorts of reasons. Um, like if you actually have a production site going through Cloudflare, um, you could actually use these workers to insert your priority hints for reels and not just for testing. Um, and then, so on the Cloudflare side of things, Andy Davies, uh, Matt Hobbs, props Matt, hope you're feeling well, glad to see you're here. Um, but um, they have articles, really good art, art, art articles on how to use uh, Cloudflare workers combined with web page test uh, for prototyping. And so this is mostly based on Andy's uh, worker. And there's some boilerplate at the beginning. The basics is this is the, the main entry point into the worker. Um, here, let me zoom in just a little more, where it's basically just anything that comes in run this respond with or run this handle request uh, function and pass it back to the the requesting browser. And this one, it basically looks at the the URL that came in for the request and it looks to see is there an X host header added from web page test. If there isn't an X host header, uh, the request probably didn't come from web page test using the override host, um, fail it, return a access denied so you don't end up running an open proxy for the web kind of thing through workers. Um, but if it does have the X host, basically just replace the URL host with the host that came in the X host header. So in this case, it would uh, replace the test.perf.workers.dev uh, part of the URL with www.amazon.com and keep the rest. So we have the, the full path to the product page and everything else. Uh, this bypass transform, I wasn't using it at the time, and actually you don't need to use it right now anyway, because uh, priority hints is on origin trial, but you can add this header to your web page test to say, even though I overrode the host and I'm going through workers, I want the worker to do nothing with the request. So you get a good AB, because you don't want to test Amazon production uh, page and a proxy version of the page against each other, because they're going to be on different infrastructure. and so you can proxy both the before and after uh, and just turn on your rewrites for one form of it. Uh, if you pass this header, it'll turn off the rewriting and just pass the request through so you get a better AB comparison. And then the other thing it does, and this is specific if you're rewriting the HTML, if you wanna like um, rewrite everything, you can remove this filter, but this is basically just looking um, does the request have an accept of text HTML? Is it is it an HTML request? Everything else just gets passed through as a straight proxy. Uh, but if it is an HTML request, and we're not by bypassing the transforms, we fetch the origin request, and then this HTML rewriter is kind of a, a really cool. So. I'd say probably two years ago when I was actually at Cloudflare, this didn't exist yet. And so you had to fetch the text, regex the test text and, <laughs> and mark it up. But now there's a, a streaming HTML rewriter that will stream the, the response as it's coming through. So there's almost no overhead. And you can use, um, 
selector queries um, against the HTML to say, hey, when you get this match on the selector, run this function uh, against the request and then transform the response as it's going through. And so what I did was... You've been busy, these are, like, yeah. Yeah, so these are basically all of the tests, all of the pages that I've tested uh, and prototyped using workers. The ones that didn't work, I probably deleted. So I, I think I actually tried more than these. These are mostly the ones that worked. Um, I don't think I blogged about developers.google.com, but the reason I didn't blog about that one was it was using both lazy load and a hero image. It was using lazy load on the hero mm -hmm. image and my worker. So if you look at this, this prioritize high function, all it does is it takes the element that was uh, matched in the the media query or in the, the selector, and it removes the loading attribute and it adds the importance equals high attribute. And so it felt a little like cheating to strip the lazy load off of developers.google.com as part of adding priority hints, um, but it got a lot faster, obviously. Um, but the rest of them, uh, Google Flights, uh, Best Buy, MSN, Amazon, they all, I'd say probably the hardest part of all of the work was getting a selector query that would match just the hero image uh, and not uh, a whole bunch of them. So like this Airbnb was awesome. <laughs> FMP target, <laughs> first meaningful paint. And so they've got like the hero nice. image already nice. tagged with a, a nice <laughs> ID um, that you can go, hey, this is their, their hero element. Um, yeah, I'd say Fox News is probably the most complicated path. I think I still hand created that one. I don't think I copied any of the paths directly out of like DevTools, you know, copy selector path or whatever, sure. um, because I wanted them to be a little more robust to page changes. Um, but once you have the selectors, um, you know, really all it is is doing is adding the attribute importance equals high to the to the markup as it goes through. And so when you do that, uh, combined with the script, um, for priority hints, the only other thing that was actually needed was a command line flag. Let me see if I have, yep. So uh, the en enable blink features priority hints command line flag. So in, in the Chromium tab of the advanced settings, uh, you can just pass the enable Blink features priority hints. Uh, if you're doing it on a production site right now, you'd actually be using uh, an or origin trial token, uh, but you can turn it on from command line just by doing this. And so when I was doing my A-B testing, I wasn't using the host header to turn off priority hints support because I was letting uh, it rewrite everything anyway and add the importance equals high. I just wouldn't pass this command line flag to Chrome. And so priority hints wouldn't be enabled in the before. And with the command line flag, it would be enabled in after, uh, but Makes both sense. would get the, the full rewrite. Ooh, so that was a, a fairly big mouthful, mouthful. And yeah, so Matt's got in the comments a, a plug to his um, blog post. I highly recommend reading yeah, it. Yeah, it's rock solid stuff. And so I guess there's also a question about how to inject JavaScript into an existing HTML response. I, I recommend looking at the docs for workers. Um, you can uh, match on like the end of a body tag and insert a script element, and you can insert sort of arbitrary things. Um, Node.js doesn't really come into play, uh, but you can in inject arbitrary script. You can rewrite any page elements. It's pretty freakishly uh, capable. And I haven't tried it with the Fastly uh, Edge no, I haven't either. Um, I see that question about the. Uh, well, I played a little bit actually with the fast the edge a little bit, but for that, I know there is a really good, like there's a blog post out from Fastly. Like they talked about using the computed edge to prototype speed optimizations in web page tests. So, um, if you are a Fastly user, that's something to dig into there. I see Barry's commenting on my English. <laughs> I, I was not sure if I was going to call you out on this one or let that one sit. I was going to let it sit, but yeah, no, it's the uh, the URL you're testing. Yeah. Yes, you all the, the things. Yeah. 
Do I have potatoes and tomatoes too? <laughs> or <laughs> aluminum? <laughs> the aluminum earls. Um, yeah, and so like with Google Flights, for example, we were looking for, it's one of those things when you work for a large company um, and you create blog posts, you can't use other people's content. <laughs> and so it was like, okay, let's find a Google property that we can use priority hints on that will show the benefit. It turns out there's a crazy number of Google properties that don't have any images. Um, <laughs> and the few that did have images, it's like there's nothing but like one image on the page. And it's so flights ended up being a fairly good one where it's got this hero image. It's got a whole bunch of other stuff. And the hero image is the LCP element. Let me see. Yeah, I don't think I have the just the test result. And so it was one of those, go ahead, just inspect it, um, start playing with the path to it. I don't, let me see if I can see what did I actually end up using as the um, Google Flights. Oh, okay, the class. Yeah, that doesn't feel like it's <laughs> terribly robust considering it's like a, a generated that class. class thing, yeah, that class thing makes me a little nervous about the robustness of it, but yeah. Yeah, but you know, when you're prototyping and you're hoping to run a test in, against something that hasn't been built and changed, yeah, it works. Um, but yeah, the, the actual selector from Chrome would be um, pretty... Uh, what the... So I, I would do query selector all, I think, and then just, so, yeah, so that, that would like be the query selector from uh, DevTools, which would work. Uh, it feels a little more uh, breaky than the one that I used. Uh, and so I tried to be a little, and so when I'm playing with it, I basically just sit in console and do query selector all, and then try a bunch of different query selectors until I only get the one element back. Uh, instead of 20 or 30 when I'm prototyping it against a site. Uh, if you actually own the site, you have a lot more control over doing that. And so like with Google Flights when we did it, um, it actually ended up being, let me see if we can go to 100 milliseconds as well. So I'd love to talk to the team about getting this actually rolled out to production. But yeah, so the, yeah. the main hero image and content loaded uh, actually, in this case, even sooner than it would have loaded before. Um, but the LCP fired, what are we here, two seconds versus way out here at 2.7 seconds. And so a 700 millisecond win on a three-second page is a fairly huge win. Um, it's a, a fairly simple page. The one I think I was more... So I was really excited about the Amazon one, for example, um, just because it's already so well optimized uh, that being able to get that kind of a gain maybe i over zoomed um, being able to get that kind of a gain on a product and so this ends up working for uh, almost any e-tailer i will say it gets a little complicated if you're using something like react or a, a, a spa framework that's not doing server-side rendering sure. there's not a lot priority hints can do if your javascript is sort of the building the UI and the, the slow point. Um, and if it's already done layout, you might be able to get a slight bit of a win if your your spa can still tag the hero images as important, um, but your long path uh, is going to be the, the framework. So it works best if you've got something emitting HTML, whether it's SSR or just a, a straight old HTML uh, classic content, uh, but it works really well for e-commerce uh, for getting the product image loaded. Um, it's kind of par for the course, right? Like if you're using a JavaScript framework, like for an SPA architecture, like it's just interesting because it is like a switch, right? Like if you're using an SPA, then you're probably going to spend most of your performance optimization time in the JavaScript. Like that's where the bulk of your work is going to be. And like mechanisms like this become more interesting if you're not using that SPA because then you have the JavaScript kind of yeah. And so like Etsy, another product page that we love well, because Etsy has an awesome performance team. Yes, they do. Um, same deal, right? The the product image can load, in this case, what is it? Three seconds instead of, 
uh, fully loaded here at 3.6 seconds. And so that's still a fairly significant win. Um, and it doesn't look like it like degraded anything else. You still get the rest of the UI loading even a little faster um, without sort of penalizing anything else. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Ah, shout out to Link's <laughs> cards. <Yes. laughs> um, yeah, so. You know, it, it's sort of a MySpace-looking page, but it has a massive background image. Uh, thanks, Lucas from Cloudflare, for suggesting it. <laughs> um, but yeah, even that, with as complicated as it is, we could still boost the priority of the background uh, image. Well, it wasn't really a background image. It's a placed image. Um, and still get a one and a half second win on getting that main. Uh, it sort of surrounds the video, if you would, uh, mm -hmm. getting that loaded. I will say if you've got a background image that's your um, LCP element, uh, you can still use priority hints to boost it, but you need a preload tag um, to actually put something in markup that the browser can see to load the image. So you'll both be preloading the image that's your background image and also adding an importance equals high to the preload tag. Uh, and that's what you'd do if you're using a background image. Cool thing is, I didn't realize this until until Yoav told me that the uh, the preload tag takes CSS media queries, and so if you're using uh, responsive design and you don't have a hero image in mobile, but you do have a hero image in desktop, um, or the background image changes, that kind of thing, you can use your same media queries with your preload tags for image, and put the priority hint on that on the preload tag if you want to boost the priority of an image only for desktop or only for mobile. Um, you don't have to sort of make the call and always. Uh, ah, so ignore the actual content. Um, so for um, it's not just e-commerce, right? It's uh, content sites tend to have a big hero image for the main story element, for example. And so my first gut reaction was to try CNN. Um, I gave up fairly quickly. It looks like it's mostly a, a fairly complicated React app these days. And so there wasn't an easy way to rewrite it. Um, but Fox News ends up being a fairly straightforward HTML-ish uh, piece of content. And we've got sort of the, the hero image. Uh, and since it loads late and the space wasn't reserved, it also causes a layout shift. Um, but when we look at the waterfall, it's got sort of that typical pattern where you've got like, all of this <coughs> critical render blocking stuff loading, and then all of the images load. And the hero image is one of those things that loads fairly late in, in the general waterfall cycle, if you would. And there's some other uh, you know static logos and stuff that happen to come before it in the markup, even if it's not things that are sort of front and center for the user. And so rewriting it, adding the priority hint, we could get it. This is the waterfall. So before it came out at request number 25, and there was oh. a whole lot of other stuff coming in before. It is still on a different origin, uh, so the connection still needs to be established. But once we boosted the priority of the, the hero image, it actually ended up loading as request number four. Um, most of the other stuff, oh, highest. So it's probably just a, a factor of how quickly the connections actually got established um, that it ended up loading even before the CSS and stuff. Um, but it loaded well before the initial render, and that's how we got such a huge jump in the in the performance uh, to where, yeah, previously you'd get like the text content 2.8-ish seconds, and then you didn't actually see the hero image until 3.3 seconds, and it shifted the content down. And with the priority hints, the hero image was already in place by the time the initial render hit. Also, in this case, we actually get a little CLS boost, too. Yep. Not, they can counter with a height and width attribute or right. something like You probably yeah. still want the height and yes. width attribute, so you're yeah, not right. relying on the image being loaded right. sooner. But it's it's nice that your initial pop of content actually has your hero image in place. Yeah. I that is nice. There was a there, it's, you kind of alluded to it maybe, but there was a couple of times now. I think Matt asked and, and Brian started this, but like priority hints, we're talking a lot about like raising priority, right? But like priority hints and preloads together, like you could. Yeah, they actually work really down. well together. Um, so like I said, with scripts in particular, if you preload a script, it's going to default to high priority uh, as if it was a render blocking script. Now, it's possible that you have 
async scripts that you want to preload because they're like dependent modules for another async script that you're running. Um, but you don't want to preload them until after the parser has seen the other async script. But you also don't, don't want them to load at a higher priority than everything mm -hmm. else. You can lower the priority of the async script that you're preloading. Um, Blocking scripts at the end of the body is a big one, where they're they're like sort of a medium priority by default. If you want to lower them to be the same priority as images and load in parser order instead, you can lower the priority of them. Um, I saw the question actually called out fonts specifically. Yeah. Um, you can lower the priority of preloaded fonts. The default priority for preloaded fonts is already lower than uh, regular font priority, so it's not like super high priority, but they are still loaded at a, a relatively high priority uh, if you preload them now. And so you can lower it even more. Um, but that's part of what got fixed as part of the 95 preload fix, whereas if you're preloading fonts before, they would load before everything else just because of the preload hammer. Now, if you preload fonts and you have your preloads like at the end of your head, they will actually preload after your scripts and everything else that were loaded before it. And so you have a little more granular control, even without priority hints right now on fonts. But yeah, the easiest win is boosting image priority. Um, but yeah, you can lower uh, script priority. You can make it more deterministic about sort of make things load in parser order if you want to, uh, rather than boosting things out of order. Interesting. You also alluded to this one, I think, with the developers.google site, right? But like, because I think your your worker script that you showed, you're actually pulling the loading attribute out entirely right away just to make sure it's not like lurking about, right? Because yep. these are going to be conflicting. What if you had, if you were loading lazy on a script or on an image, I should say, and you give it an importance high? So, just self destruct? No. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it won't help much um so i think of loading equals lazy loading equals more as a when does the browser decide it wants to load this resource and loading equals lazy means it won't decide to load it until it knows it's close to the viewport regardless of what priority it chooses to use when it finally decides to load it and then the priority hints is more about when the browser has decided it wants to load something how important uh, should it be uh, relative to other resources that it's thinking of loading at the same time? And so yeah. they don't conflict with each other. I don't know that you'd ever want to use both at the same time. Uh, if you're using lazy load and priority importance equals high, um, in theory, if if an image is already in the viewport, it would have been giving, given a high priority by the time lazy load started anyway, um, because Chrome treats oh, that's <laughs> of the I forgot to do that to serve there <laughs> yeah so chrome treats in viewport images as high priority that said you know below the fold images will still load uh with loading equals lazy um just because of the new view, near viewport it wants to have them loaded by the time you scroll into it and if you use importance equals high those will load at a high priority higher priority than they would naturally um, so they don't really conflict with each other, but there's not a lot of reason to use them both at the same time. Yes, I will sir. say the one thing I didn't call out, and um, I know of a few cases where they're going to be important, is uh, it's not just an HTML attribute. It's also a, a parameter to fetch. And so on the request for fetch, you can say importance equals high or importance equals low. And so for your API calls, you can prioritize them. And so if you've got a bunch of API calls that are loading background data, for example, uh, some JSON that you need for some weird purposes or whatever, and you also have like type down autocomplete API calls as someone's typing in a search bar or something like that, you can prioritize the, the user interaction API calls as high and the other API calls as low. And assuming you have a server that will honor priorities on HTTP2 or HTTP3, you can actually interrupt the streams uh, and get proper prioritization and more responsive user input uh, by controlling the API as well. Okay. And I, I did want to, the last one I did have was Airbnb, uh, since that was the, the, yes, the one the sort of the stereotypical story, right? case. Yeah. 
And yeah, by actually adding importance equals high to their, their hero image, we're back to the point where we shaved another 600 milliseconds off and got the main hero image loaded a lot sooner like it was originally intended to be able to do. Uh, sure. But without re relying on browser heuristics to do it, now the site can actually say, load this piece of content sooner. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty clever stuff. And like, so I think, yeah, I think what, uh, <laughs> yeah, you started this off by saying it's sort of, uh, what did you say? Get out of jail free guy. It's I don't a, remember how you... a cheat code for, yeah, for cheat LCP. Code. Yeah, which, you know, uh, sure seems to, it's one of those things. Uh, Here's enough examples, at least, where at least when it was judicially applied, like carefully, like you pick, you know, cherry pick the LCP image and don't just go nuts and start tweaking importance of everything. Like there was very little, if any, downside to any one of these examples here. And the impact is, it's sizable. Like you said, the Amazon one being a really good example because Amazon does so much work to optimize their pages. Like they're, they're kind of like, you know, one of the poster childs for that kind of thing. And like to see that big of an improvement there is. It's, yeah. It's and I mean, even yeah. Google flights too. It's sure. like yeah. Google sites aren't known to be slow, but <laughs> it, 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 it just wasn't something that you could actually control before. And sure. so, I mean, for a lot of people that actually have OKRs or goals around improving performance, you might be able to reach your goals with one quick change and take the rest of the quarter off. That's yeah, it'd be pretty quiet. Well, there you go. That's pretty <laughs> awesome. I did more time off and good for that. Um, Rick's question I thought was interesting because it's funky. Uh, when the LCP for a given viewport depends on the initial scroll position. So let's say that you have a page with those deep links to anchors or you know subsections of the page, and presumably those you know direct links are getting enough traffic to warrant you caring significantly about like what you're going to do for your LCP, right? Because what's in the content of that initial viewport is going to be different. Your LCP is going to be different. I honestly am not sure what my advice is here, other than like first off, like the first thing I'd say is like make sure you're actually getting significant enough traffic to the warrant spending time figuring this out anyway. But and I was going to say, I don't know that there's much that you can do because usually those deep links are fragments, right? And so they're not visible from the server. Mm. Um, and so when you're generating the HTML, you don't have the visibility into the fragment or where you are in the page or what it's going to auto scroll to. Um, uh, yeah. So <laughs> if, if you do have a lot of deep links that are happening, um, I don't know that there's much you can do. Yeah, that is kind of my conclusion. And it's going to be the same problem for lazy load too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt requested that you blog about all your priority information, uh, which I would just like to put it out there that you know I know you know you can contribute to you know web .dev when apps, but like blog.webpagetest.org would also accept such posts and content. But it would what. <laughs> But this, I guess the thing is like with priority hints and with the change in preload, um, you know, respecting kind of source order and, 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 and not just boosting things up to a super high, like front of the line kind of queue, it does feel like knowledge and understanding of the prioritization process in Chrome is becoming like increasingly important for optimizing in that browser. Probably. And I will say there's the one Google Doc that's linked from a bunch yes. of Addy's web dev articles, and I think from the Priority Hints article as well, which has the what the different priorities are um, for the different content types. And it has a section down at the bottom of the doc as well that has, when Priority Hints are applied, this is what it does to the different uh, types of content as well. That's probably very important. Um, I will say, there is prioritization is a fairly big problem in general. And there's things that I probably haven't talked about and aren't in the article. Some of the things like when Chrome, so browsers in general um, go through the HTML as it comes in. And as they discover things, they do something with those things. And so for Chrome, for example, it won't, hold back low priority resources unless it actually has high priority resources. And so in the beginning of your HTML, if you have a bunch of image preloads, for example, like 10 image preloads, and then you have a script tag, 
the parser is seeing those 10 image preloads. Um, well, let's call them, eh, it might not be the best way, but let's say you've got 10 medium priority blocking scripts and then one CSS and one font or something like that. Um, you would, if you look at it holistically and you look at the prioritization doc, you'd go, okay, the CSS should go first because it has the highest priority. But you have to kind of think of it in the terms of the browser parser in the preload scanner where it sees the HTML as it's coming in and it goes, okay, this is a medium priority re resource, let it through, it goes out right away as a request. And so even though they're not in priority order, you'll tend to see like the beginning of the waterfall will actually show up in parser order. Like as the browser discovers stuff, it requests it and it passes it straight through to the connection until it actually reaches a point where it has back pressure on making requests. And then prioritiz prioritization starts to come in to what it chooses to send the request out for. Um, but like the, the high priority CSS um, versus JavaScript, it will still at a connection level pass the priority through to the origin, um, but it will be in whatever order it came in. Uh, one of the things that I have on my list to play with with Chrome in particular is to um, delay a little bit. And so as the browser sees, like if it gets 10K of HTML all in one chunk, instead of processing it one token at a, at a time and then sending the requests as they come through, um, process the 10K, collect all of the requests that would have been sent, and then when we're done with the 10K, send things out in priority order. Don't know if that's going to be a win or not, um, because there's something to be said for the early stuff actually going in part for order. Um, yeah, so, and when you start talking about like prioritization across connections, uh, coalescing HTTP2 connections, whether servers actually honor priorities at a connection level, uh, for a long time, Chrome would, for HTTP2, it would not do any local browser prioritization. It would just send everything through to the origins and let them sort it out. Uh, but given how many third parties are on pages and stuff, it ended up being that, yeah, I mean, we'd send all the requests out, but they're across five different connections and they're not actually prioritized against each other. So Chrome re-implemented um, the HTTP one style throttling uh, where you sort of get the two-stage waterfall even for HTTP2 because of that, uh, which feels like a shame. Uh, another thing on my list to try and do is to see, can we at least do it like for same origin and things like that? But yeah, there's a lot of subtlety in the the prioritization sure. logic in general. Yeah. Um, all right, so one, this is a question from Matt. I want to make sure this brought up because this is kind of part of the reason why we wanted. I wanted to bring you on for this anyway. Like we talked at the beginning about how this isn't really a standard yet, right? It's like a Chrome thing in origin trials. It's an emerging standard, if you want to call it that. Um, how? What's the? In, what's the process for this specifically, and just kind of in general for like how does this get to a point where it actually lands? So the the big blocker is getting developer feedback from the origin trial that. Yes, it works. Yes, we want it. Uh, and yes, the API surface, the HTML attribute, the fetch parameter uh, is easy to work with and doesn't need to be refined. Um, like one of the things that we're sort of debating on the issue list for the, the WICG spec for it is, do would it make sense to combine it with loading? So you have loading equals urgent, loading equals idle, and loading equals lazy. Um, it's tough because like loading equals eager right now, which is more important, eager or urgent? Um, how do they interact with each other? Does it make sense to have separate attributes? Um, then we need to, in parallel, uh, send it for tag review, uh, which is just sort of the architecture group for W3C, uh, for them to weigh in and go, yeah, those attributes look yeah reasonably good. Um, go ahead. Uh, feel free to ship it. Uh, request feedback from other browsers. It's not a blocking uh, issue of any kind, but just check in with uh, Mozilla and Safari WebKit to see if they have any concerns about the API surface. They all use prioritization. So in early feedback I've had with them, they're interested in seeing how it plays out. They're not actively working on it. Uh, mm -hmm. But the big blocker for 
Chrome actually shipping it is to get feedback from devs that it's a valuable thing to have. Uh, so we're not polluting the, the attribute namespace unnecessarily. And so, yes, please try the origin trial. And more importantly, uh, provide feedback, send blog posts, do whatever about the benefits you got. And I assume most sites that it would matter on are in uh, a moratorium of some kind, but next week is Black Friday. So if you have an e-commerce site and you want an easy win for your performance metrics before that, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. How do they get to the origin trial? How do you register for one of those? Yeah. So if you search for origin trials for Chrome, I think on our, our blog post, we all also have a direct link to it. Um, but there's a list of currently running origin trials. Just click on priority hints and register. And what you do is you give it a domain um, like www.amazon.com or whatever and say, I want a token for this domain, and there's no review process or anything, you'll get a token back. Uh, the one uh, you you do say, do you want all subdomains? So you could do like amazon.com, which would cover like any static domains under that as well. Um, and then it is important, uh, the token that you get back needs to be sent in the HTTP headers. Uh, there are two ways to do origin trials. You can do it in markup with a meta HTTP equiv tag or in headers. Um, this origin trial impacts the preload scanner. So it happens before the HTML is parsed. So you can't use the, the origin trial token in HTML. It won't work. Uh, it, you can put it there. It just won't do anything. Um, and the other thing they ask you is like, how many page loads are you expecting to see? Uh, that's not a gate to anything, but if you're running a site like the size of Amazon, you can't actually ship it to production 100%. Uh, I think the origin trial automatically turns itself off when it gets to like 0.5% of usage across all Chrome page loads. And so if you're running a really massive site, you need to do it as part of a, an A-B test or an experiment to a limited select group of your users just so that you don't cross that threshold and kill the origin trial for everyone. I was going to say um, the origin trial, I'm guessing the reason why they cut it off is a safety mechanism in case things are bad. Right. So yeah. the reason origin trials were created was we didn't want to pollute the the HTML namespace with prefixed like WebKit dash uh, features, right? And so they want to keep usage below the deprecation threshold, which means we can turn features off without uh, having to notify everybody. And so if it got too wide usage, um, it would become a de facto standard without actually becoming standardized. And we want to avoid shipping something until we've actually nailed down the API surface and what it should look like. And we could get stuck into a situation where we can't change the API because 30% of the web depends on it as we shipped it when we were testing it, and now we can't change it. And so that's kind of why they want to keep the usage down, but still get enough enough feedback. And there aren't a lot of sites that can move 0.5% of overall web usage, but there are some, right? Sure. And so just have to be kind of careful in there. Yeah. To be yes. fair, those sites that can move that kind of traffic wouldn't ship it to production without doing a trial anyway. <laughs> so anyway, no. it fits in pretty well. Yeah, those are the kind of sites that are just going to roll that out to mass. Yeah, 100% of the audience. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, OK. Well, I mean, we do have, do you have a couple of minutes? There's like one or two couple of questions that have been kind of trickling in. Yeah, okay. happy to. So uh, this is not necessarily just priority hints, but we have been talking about LCP a lot as it relates to this. It's just the question about, uh, you know, LCP element, how long is it looking for that and all that kind of jazz. Yep. So web page test will look for an LCP element and to the end of the test. Uh, and so if the test ends before the consent banner shows up or whatever else, uh, web page test won't capture it. Chrome itself looks for the LCP element until the first user interaction. Um, I don't think scroll counts as an interaction. I can't remember. I don't think so um, either. Right. But I think the interaction, right? And scroll is considered passive. So usually scroll is kind of excluded from those categories. Right. Yeah. And so the entire session up until the user actually does something with the page uh, for Chrome uh, will get looked at. And so if you have a slow loading consent banner, but it does show up for the user before they exit out or click on an article or something, that will get marked as the, the LCP element in the field uh, and Search Console and everything else. Um, 
That said, it can go both ways because if you have a consent banner that's cookie based and they accept it, um, repeat views won't have that as the LCP element anymore, right? So because Chrome is a RUM uh, measurement, it will report the LCP of whatever they're looking at. And so if they come back and they've already accepted the cookie banner, they won't see it. And so you may end up actually having bimodal, trimodal LCP elements in the wild. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, I did I did find the doc uh, and then uh, dropped the link to that in the chat. But then Matt was curious if that was up to date. Apparently it's got a 2015. I'm going to see if I can pull it up really quick again. Uh, date on it, but I think you updated that one pretty recently. The yeah. prioritization stuff. Yeah, I don't think there's been more than one doc. I mean, it has a as created, but it should have a last edited. Yeah, oh. sorry. Yep. If you yeah, it's got the way down at the bottom. It's got the priority hints table. Yes, that is the authoritative doc. Uh, it was originally created in 2015, but it has been updated over the years. Um, there haven't been as many changes as you might like <laughs> since 2015. <laughs> so there have been some slight changes. This was from the original work on uh, sort of setting the two-phase loading and prioritization and stuff. Um, and like font preloads and stuff have been added to the original table. Um, but now there's a down below, way down below. Keep going there. Oh, right here. There's the same right. table where the up arrow is if you say importance equals high, the down arrow is if you say importance equals low. And for most things, importance equals high or importance equals low explicitly puts it into the higher or low uh, priority category. There are some things like early uh, media matching CSS. Even if you lower the priority of render blocking CSS, it's still going to be high priority, uh, mostly to prevent uh, shooting yourself in the foot. Um, and then I think that might be the only thing that doesn't follow the pattern of uh, everything goes into high or low if you explicitly say it. And then it goes down to parser order uh, once you're within the same uh, bucket. And sure. then the round dot is where it would naturally have shown up. Okay. And Rick and then Barry uh, actually pointed out we were wrong. Scroll does stop the, like it does count as the interaction. Okay. So Chrome will stop reporting on LCP by tap scroll, scroll as soon as the user does tap scroll or key press. Excellent. Thanks, Rick. It's always nice to have folks kind of in the side who know what they're talking about to fact check on things like that. <laughs> yes. And Matt mentioned the, the URL is, or URL is so memorable for that doc. And yeah, I, I have to find it. Yeah. I actually have to go through one of Addy's articles that talks about prioritization and uh, click on his reference to find my own doc. That's yeah, that's a thing. It's I've, I've I've mentioned this before. I think on Twitter, like I, the Chrome team puts out some amazing docs, and they're all on these Google Docs. And then trying to find them is absolute just pain in the butt later on because none of them have friendly URLs. And yeah, it's a thing. But there's some great stuff out there. They help pump out. Um, this was the blog post you were mentioning URL priority hints, right? So just yes. to the uh, because I don't think we actually put that URL. So just to give everybody the URL, um, if you want to read more on priority hints, and it does have information about the origin trial. I looked somewhere down here and the prioritization we just talked about. Uh, do da do da somewhere right there. Uh, mm -hmm. Then that article should help to get you started. Awesome. All right. Well, Pat, thank you for walking through uh, priority and stuff. Appreciate that. It's been I, honestly, honestly, this is like I say this is like because everybody should know and it's really cool. But it's like also I haven't actually sat down and like dug really good and deep into it. So this is sort of my cheat code for <laughs> forcing me to have a chance to do it and learn about what's going on. So that's so awesome. And now instead of having to blog about it for a little while, I can point people to the video. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that is helpful too. Yeah, yeah, right. And then everybody else can blog about all the experiments that they run on it. Like, yes. Which would... bonus points I get feedback to justify shipping it. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, it's, it's it, it, everybody wins here. Everybody wins. Awesome. Well, yeah. Well, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Um, and yeah, if anybody wants to learn more, check out the blog post, or you know, you can talk to uh, Pat on Twitter. I'm sure I'd be safe volunteering you for that. Oh yeah, yeah. Or, DMs or are open. Yeah. 
Yep. Awesome. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, I guess next week for everybody in the U.S. is Thanksgiving, so enjoy the uh, Thanksgiving break. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch everybody after.